All right, class, settle, please. Your regular teacher is sick today. I'm your substitute teacher, Commander Rick. Please raise your hand as I call the roll. Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. Dorothy of Oz. Ah. Elliot and E.T. Yes. Yes. Uh, Damien. Leave that cat alone, young man. Johnny Quest. Mm -hmm. John Connor. Is that a slingshot in your hand? Logan. Logan, not here? Oh, he's out running. Fine. All right, class, today we're going to talk about science fiction and fantasy and children. Now, now, pay attention, there will be a quiz. Okay, would someone get the lights, please? Thank you, Mr. Connor. All right, who would like to turn on the projector, please? How about you, Nancy? Nancy? Would you like to stay after class? Rising anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe. Here's the vote and the English only sign. Mm. 40,000 tons of oil with PCBs blew up the ozone layer today. Greetings, prisoners of gravity. We live in a science fiction age. Genetic engineering, global warming, pocket computers. Ten years ago, phones were on cables and TVs had antennas. Today, it's reversed. Things change so fast, no one can predict the consequences. People worry what kind of future we're leaving our children. Well, science fiction has always wondered about the future. And yet, very little science fiction involves children. Why? Let's ask an expert. Um, I know John Clute. He's been reviewing science fiction since he was a top for magazines like New Worlds and Interzone. John, it's Commander Rick. Is there any tradition in science fiction of stories about children or adolescents? Yeah, <clears throat> there's a lot of difference between an adolescent and a child. The child is something that W.C. feels was definitive, definitive about, I think. I mean, you just do not want them. They're, they're as bad as pets. And pets, of course, in most science fiction are, are, are cuddly aliens. Um, possibly we're familiar by now with the term neoteny, which describes um, basically a retained adolescence, a retained childhood. Our large heads, our large eyes are all neotenous. So children, in a way, are, are sort of um, neotenies to us. And we find them terribly cute, and we change them into little aliens. And we write lots of science fiction stories about them, but they're almost always appalling. Adolescents, on the other hand, are, are the protagonists in the basic science fiction story. And the basic science fiction story is a move from a restricted universe through some kind of breakthrough into a new and unrestricted universe of knowledge or of space or of maturity. The basic science fiction novel is a rite of passage outward. And almost all science fiction stories, if you analyze them, um, have some hidden adolescence have some hidden movement of this sort, have some kind of puberty or menarch, implied or lit or right there on the text. Speaking of rites of passage, one of my favorite SF novels about an adolescent is Alexi Panchin's Rite of Passage. Rite of Passage is a classic rite of passage novel, and it's written fairly late in the genre, 1968 it was published, and it's very clear that what he is doing is taking the classic Generation Starship pocket universe novel or story universe by Heinlein is the best known of these, and um, modernizing it to a certain extent and bringing it into, into um, consciousness so that instead of being called universe or non-stop, as Brian Aldous's version is called, it's called Rite of Passage because that's exactly what it's about. It's about learning the constrictions, the, the shibboleths of the constricted 
universe that the child, the girl, grows up in, coming back as an adult in a form, in a way that allows her to critique her childhood, critique the society, demonstrate how things must be changed, how the real universe looks. It's classic. I agree. Thanks, John. Science fiction treats adolescents differently than children. A lot of the time, kids are viewed as appalling, amoral terrors. Check out John Wyndham's creepy classic, The Midwich Cuckoos. Everyone in the town of Midwich is knocked out by a mysterious force field. They awaken a few hours later feeling fine, until one by one, all of the women discover they are with the child. Strange, blonde, golden-eyed, psychic, hyper-developed child. The Brady Bunch from hell. By the climax, you're cheering for their teacher to kill the kids. And even more terrifying is Jerome Bixby's short story, It's a Good Life, which was turned into a gripping episode on the original Twilight Zone series. A few authors write about bright and wonderful kids. Samuel R. Delaney and his novels Nova and Dahlgren spring to mind. More recently, there's Christine Catherine Rush's The Story Child. Here, in a future devastated by disease, a miraculous child has the power to heal the sick with her stories. Kids are real browner. As well as writing, Christine edits the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. Chris, why are there so many children in fantasy and so few in science fiction? I think science fiction for a long time took itself very seriously and didn't realize, you know, that it had active scientists, active people, active heroes, all of whom are kind of adult characters by definition. And a lot of fantasy deals with innocence and in some respects especially now it deals with the end of innocence and that's why there are a lot of child characters I think there's a trend going on um, especially in the short fiction that I'm seeing in which science fiction is moving toward more child characters and dealing with them we have an issue upcoming in FNSF in which a lot of the characters are children in the stories. I kind of put it together with that in mind, where they're dealing with, with childhood. And they're science fiction stories, dealing with childhood and dealing with children. And working on, I think we're coming to our end of our own innocence in science fiction. And dealing with science as, sometimes as a big evil now, instead of a sense of wonder. And that's why we're bringing in children again, so that we can bring that um, sense of the end of innocence that we're all feeling in science fiction into the into the fiction itself the issue of fantasy and science fiction about kids is out short stories by charles pellegrino and george zabrowski ellen kushner brian stableford brian's story the invisible worm involves biological warfare and group parenting group parenting i want some gals just like the gals who married all my dads the collection is actually really quite good but then children have always worked best in sf in short stories as subjects and as narrators Check out Harlan Ellison's classic, Jeff D is Five, or a lot of stories by Orson Scott Card, or, well, almost any Ray Bradbury collection. Weird Babies are another long tradition, from Judith Merrill's horrific 1948 story, That Only a Mother, to James Morrow's 1991 story, Daughter Earth, where a couple give birth to a bouncing baby biosphere. For a full-length novel about kids, you have to look to fantasy. And for sheer number of books sold, you're talking about Mercedes Lackey. Her novel, Bardic Voices, is a coming-of-age story about Rune, a young woman who dreams of being a master musician. By the Sword is a coming-of-age story about Carolyn, a young woman who dreams of being a mercenary. Like a lot of fantasy, they're set in medieval times. I asked Mercedes how much she draws upon her own childhood for inspiration. 